All righty, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for tuning on in. Today we're going to be talking about light rail in Louisville, Kentucky. Let's go. So, reason for this video is a gentleman by the name of William Price commented on my previous video about light rail in Knoxville, wondering what things would look like in Louisville. I got to thinking about it and I thought, hmm, well that'd be a pretty good idea. Started looking at where the stations would go and I'm like, well, might as well just make a whole nother video on this. Now, before we begin, I do want to point out, I've spent seven days of my life in Louisville, Kentucky. I don't live there. I haven't lived there in the past. This is from an outsider's perspective, so take everything with a grain of salt. That being said too, if you think you have a better idea, please let me know. Again, this is an outsider's perspective looking in, so I don't know the ins and outs of the city. I'm just looking at maps and, and population densities and, and empty lots and where current rail already resides. As y'all know, I'm a huge fan of rail, and any city that's growing, I think needs to consider light rail as an option. Since 2010, Louisville has added 83,000 jobs and 2,700 new businesses. That's a very good thing. The only problem is, as you continue to add more jobs and businesses and residents, traffic continues to get worse and worse. Eventually, you reach a point where you can't make the roads any wider. Look at Houston or LA or Atlanta. The best solution for traffic at that point is to build light rail. Unfortunately, building new rail lines can be incredibly expensive, just like widening roads. Luckily for Louisville, the lines already exist. Granted, the rail lines are owned by Norfolk Southern and they're used to get freight around the city and to the Louisville International Airport to be shipped all over the world. But fortunately, a lot of the lines are double track or even wider, meaning that trains can go opposite directions or if one train is stopped on one line, trains can still use the other line to get through. So as traffic gets worse on the roads, I think resorting to rail to transport people around the city is a good idea. As the city continues to grow in density, more and more people are going to need a way to get around. As a fair comparison, Nashville built the Music City Star by retrofitting freight to light rail. I think Louisville already has the infrastructure in place and they could greatly benefit from building light rail. So before we get too far in the weeds, let's take a look at previous proposals and why they were good as well as why they were bad. So in 2004, there was a proposal on the books to build light rail in Louisville. They had done $10 million of environmental studies and were planning on spending about $660 million. A lot of money, but ultimately the project did not get funded. In May of 2013, a gentleman by the name of Peter Dvorak published a plan for a downtown light rail type system. While it's not necessarily truly light rail, it's a great idea to add to the existing TARC system. The downside is a lot of it runs on roads that already exist. Some of it uses existing right-of-way on rails, but the majority of it would have to run through streets downtown. Most recently, Bailey Loosemore covered bus rapid transit going from southwest Louisville into downtown. While this isn't light rail, it's definitely a step in the right direction. But ultimately, you're still taking a bus on streets that could become very crowded very quickly. And on top of that, there are rail lines that could be used for commuters. In this video, I want to take a look at lines that already exist so that they could be retrofitted for commuter rail. So let's take a look at the first line. The first route would run from the south end of the University of Louisville all the way up to Linden. The first stop would be just south of Cardinal Stadium so that people getting off the train could easily walk to Cardinal Stadium or to Churchill Downs. Additionally, it would afford access to Kroger so people taking the rail from downtown could easily access a large grocery store. On top of that, it would also afford access to the south end of the University of Louisville, which would make it easier to commute from further away without a car. The second stop would be on the south end of Brook Street on the northern part of the University of Louisville campus. Here you have an empty lot. Something could be built here that could serve the public. It's right next to some train tracks. Why not make it a train station? On top of that, the densely populated areas of Old Louisville and the Highlands would be served by this station, meaning that they could use this line to get around very rapidly without a car. The third station would be placed at the intersection of Logan and Goss Streets. Here you're sort of in the central part of the Highlands. This area of town is very densely populated, so a lot of folks would be within walking distance of this station. The next stop would be the Baxter Avenue train station just over Liberty Street. This actually used to be an old train station, but since has become abandoned. Granted, it does need some tender love and care, but a couple hundred thousand dollars could spruce this place back up. As an added bonus, the bus line already stops right near here. The fifth station could be placed right in front of St. Joseph Children's Home on Frankfurt Avenue. 
This area is densely populated, plus having a train station directly in front of an orphanage and foster home could serve those kids well by giving them transportation to go throughout the city. The sixth station and the end of the line could be placed out in Linden. Here you have a bunch of apartment complexes that are very densely populated, so a lot of folks would be within walking distance of this station. On top of that, you have all these folks that maybe drive their cars in and would prefer not to if they're going out to a bar or if they're going to see a Cardinals game or watch the Derby at Churchill Downs. The folks here I think would really enjoy being able not to have to drive a car into town if they could take the train. Plus, it would cut down on traffic and the need for parking. All in all, that totals up to 12 miles of track and six stations. So let's talk about the second line. The first stop on the second line would be the same stop as the first stop on the first line between Cardinal Stadium and Churchill Downs. From there, the line would head northwest towards Old Louisville. The second stop would be just west of Louisville Police Department, just west of 9th Street. You could build a bridge over 9th Street so that pedestrians could access Old Louisville and the station. Plus, that property is already owned by the county and the metro, meaning that building a structure on it wouldn't take near the amount of paperwork and logistics compared to building a station on private property. And though it might be a little bit of a stretch, folks on the southern end of Spalding University are within walking distance of this proposed station. The third station would be located just off of Chestnut Street to serve the west end of downtown. There are a bunch of bus stops nearby that go into downtown, so folks using this station could easily access downtown if they needed to. On top of that, this area is very densely populated, so folks needing to head north or head south on the train could easily access it. So the fourth stop would be located just south of the K&I Bridge, or just before you get to the K&I Bridge if you're heading from the south. This area is somewhat densely populated, and there's businesses popping up in this area. If you built a station, that would further accelerate the growth in this area. Finally, the last stop is across the K&I Bridge in Indiana. If folks are coming from Indiana into town and they don't want to pay for parking or don't want to deal with traffic, having a parking ride here would be an excellent option. Plus, there's businesses popping up on the north end of the river. Folks trying to get from downtown to north of the river without a car could use this line to do so. Granted, I have family that lives out this way, so maybe I am a little biased. So the next question we got to ask ourselves is, where do we store and maintain the trains? You got to have a maintenance and storage facility if you're running a light rail line. Looking at the map of Louisville, there are three places that stood out to me as good candidates for a maintenance and storage facility. The first option would be just east of Interstate 264, almost to Linden. Here, you got a nice big patch of grass where there's nothing there. If it's owned by the county or the state for that matter, it wouldn't be too much of a hassle to put in a maintenance and storage facility to store the train sets there. On top of that, it would be on one of the proposed lines, so there wouldn't have to be any transportation of trains on lines that weren't being used. The second option would be southeast of the airport, off of Jefferson Boulevard. There's a lot of industrial facilities here already, so putting a train station here wouldn't be too much of an issue as far as zoning. Granted, it is off the beaten path, a third option would be off of Kentucky 1703 at the Metro Fleet Services building. The advantage here is that the Metro already owns this property and they already do maintenance on vehicles here. Granted, it's four-wheeled vehicles made for road instead of trains made for railroad. But since the Metro already owns it, there wouldn't have to be any property acquisition, which would really cut down on all the headache of trying to acquire property. Plus, all the maintenance would be consolidated in one area, whether you're talking about cop cars or trains. So if those two lines and the maintenance facilities went up, an extension option to the airport might be a good idea. The lines could be extended from that first station at Cardinal Stadium all the way to the airport. That way, folks taking the train would have a one-stop shop to get to the airport. Granted, this would require laying tracks, which is very expensive. I think at the very least it could maybe be done for $20 million, but a $30 million estimate is probably more likely. For now, I think the best option to get people from that Cardinal Stadium proposed stop to the airport would be have a bus rapid transit line from that stop to the airport. Speaking of expensive things, how much would the entire system cost? Well, using the Nashville Star as an example, it cost about $1.3 million per mile back in 2006. It's not 2006 anymore, so taking into account inflation, the estimated cost would be about $1.91 million per mile today. 
That being said, it was run on a single track line and not a lot of it was in an urban area. So if we round up to $2 million per mile and then double it because we're running on double track, our estimated cost to build in Louisville would be about $4 million per mile. So the cost of building the first line, which is about 12 miles long, would be $50 million. The cost of building the second proposed line would be about $40 million. The combined total for those two lines is $90 million. When you add on the airport addition, which may cost around $30 million, depending on how expensive road alignment is, the cost of the total system is about $120 million. Now, if y'all are thinking that $120 million is a lot of money, you're correct. It is. But I want to remind you that the Spaghetti Junction improvement cost $1.3 billion to complete in 2016. And it was a good improvement, but it's about 10 times the cost of what I'm proposing. So if the funds are available for a $1.3 billion project, I think the funds can be found for a $120 million project. And with that, I want to say thank y'all so much for watching. I know I'm an outsider. I don't live in Louisville. I've spent maybe seven days of my life there, but I want what's best for everybody. And hopefully light rail will be something that helps everybody. If you like this video, give it a like. If you, as somebody that lives in Louisville, thinks there's a better way to do this, let me know in the comments or make your own video. But the goal of this is just getting people to start talking about light rail and alternative forms of transit. So thanks so much. We'll catch you in the next video.